Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt here. And today we're doing a camera comparison test with the Pixel 6a and the Canon R6. So honestly, I feel like the Canon pictures are probably going to look better, but the Pixel is really good at computational photography. So I just really want to see side by side if this really can stack up with a $5,000 camera because this thing only prices in at $350. So uh, that, that will be an absolute steal if the pictures come out pretty close for social media or just viewing on your smartphone. Um, so let's just go into it. I'm going to go around and about and take some pictures on the riverfront here in Dundee. And then I'll just show you them side by side and you can see for yourself whether they stack up. So yeah, so far camera test is going well. A lot of the pictures turned out better than I thought on the Pixel. So yeah, they're a little bit over sharpened if you zoom in and you nitpick. But if you're just looking at them on a smartphone size screen, you're not gonna tell the difference, honestly. It's only gonna be when I blow them up on my desktop and actually pixel peep that I'm gonna probably notice the difference between the Canon R6 and this Pixel phone. But uh, it does a pretty good job. I mean, it's definitely a pretty good camera for the price. Obviously, there's a lot of processing going on to make the pictures look good. And if you were to compare them side by side, it will probably look better than uh, my mirrorless camera if you were to ask most people. Ah, that was a very, very productive day, I must admit. If you're wondering why I'm drinking, it's tea. Not really a tea drinker by heart, but I feel like I've been forced because I'm... Uh, British, you know, I feel like everyone kind of forces you. Everyone I meet, uh, they drink tea. But uh, no, I had a very productive day with the Pixel 6a and with the Canon R6. I think I got some really great shots and a lot of them are so similar, like the framing, even the colors can be similar at times. Um, but the Pixel 6a's white balance is a bit crazy at times. So sometimes it can really get the wrong look um, in terms of the photo. But let's just jump over and we're gonna take a look side by side at the Canon R6 and the Pixel. So as you can see right here, there's obviously a massive difference in terms of the blur and the bokeh or the bokeh, whatever you call it. Honestly, you're probably gonna know now, but the one on the left is the Pixel. So yeah, it has pretty bad edge detection on this shot. It's pretty decent at people, but yeah, it obviously doesn't know what this object is and it's not doing a very good job. Okay, so this photo right here really did surprise me. So um, obviously the pixels on the left, Canon R6 on the right, very similar colors. The sharpness is very similar as well. I'm obviously shooting on the wide angle because I'm shooting wide on the Canon R6. I'm using a 17 mil in this shot. So I would say, yeah, pretty standard conditions. There's not like a tremendous amount of light or bright sky and there's not crazy shadows. So there isn't much in terms of dynamic range to sort of show off. So yeah, very generic image, but pretty good from the Pixel 6a, I must admit. This shot again, very similar. The colors are more accurate on the Canon R6, but um, I would say it's over sharpened on the flag here. Definitely looks more flat. You can definitely see the depth here a little bit more on the Canon R6, but you know what? Pretty good. You must admit pretty good for a $350, $400 phone. Honestly, uh, really, what can you expect? I mean, if it was gonna be any closer in terms of quality to the Canon, I would be really questioning my uh, my, my faith in Canon, honestly. And also, I'd be praising Google. So um, this picture here, very similar framing. I, I literally got this so perfect in terms of uh, the framing. It was really hard to sort of shoot on both at the same time. But as you can see, Colors are a little bit more vibrant on the Canon. And other than that, there's a little bit uh, too much sharpening. You can see there's not very much detail in the bottom of the ship here. Whereas obviously on the Canon, it's gonna have more detail, especially if you zoom in, there's gonna be a lot more detail retained in the shot. But um, when you're looking at a zoomed out, and especially on a smartphone, you're really not gonna tell a difference in most of these shots. They're just, they're that close on a small screen. Obviously if you're printing, you're viewing it on a big screen, then you will notice. But um, this one here, very similar again. I would just say over sharpened a little bit on the pixel. I really wish they would just 
you know, let you bump down the sharpening because I feel like if you did that, it would look very similar. Like it would look very similar. Obviously 20 megapixels on the Canon. I can feel that this building in the back is further away than the sign. Whereas on the pixel one, it just is like flat. Everything looks like the same distance away. That's the one gripe I have with uh, smartphone cameras that hasn't quite got there yet. It's just that sort of depth that you feel from the image. Um, so this photo right here, this is uh, of an Audi, and I would say the blue, honestly, is more accurate on the Canon. It was kind of like a sky light blue and not like a dark blue, like a generic blue, which is showing on the pixel right here. So honestly though, pretty good sharpening. It's, if not a little bit sharper on the pixel than on the, uh, the R6. Now if we zoom in, obviously there's more detail retained in the R6, but just looking at it, you know, at face value, I would honestly say, yeah, the pixel looks not bad. Now I was shooting at F4 on most of these shots. So that's why there's not a tremendous amount of depth. I did do a portrait shot, which you'll see later. And that one was shot at F2.8. So a little bit more depth and it compares a little bit to the portrait mode. So this shot right here, this is just of me sitting on a bench. This was like super hard to try and get. I had to balance my camera on a bin. And then I had to balance my phone against the camera so that I could like set them both on a timer. Um, but yeah, both of these are nice images. The, the pixel one is just a little bit flat and over sharpened and the blacks are just not very true to real life. Like the colors, um, just like the depth, the depth in the shadows is not there. Whereas on the R6, it just, oh, it just punches, doesn't it? When you look at like an image like that with the depth and the, just the detail and the, oh, just there's something about it. I, I just can't explain. If you get a mirrorless camera, or even if you have a DSLR, if you just take an image on it, if you take a picture and you compare it, you'll know what I mean. It just has like a, a really great feeling to see that image on the screen. It just, I love high quality images. <laughs> but no, uh, I would say not bad on the Pixel, but obviously it's it's better on the, the Canon. It looks a lot more professional, like a real professional picture. So this one right here, um, very similar. I would say, honestly, Pixel against the Canon in sort of your standard environment is very comparable. It's when you get to those darker areas and the areas with a, you know, requiring more dynamic range, when you bring in your mirrorless images, your raw files, you have so much flexibility when you're bringing down the exposure, when you're color correcting and bringing up the shadows and stuff, so much more flexibility than on the, the pixel shots. So even though you think, oh, it's only a little bit better, Trust me, when you come to edit, if you bring the highlights down on the pixel shot, it's gonna look really, really terrible. Whereas on the the raw file from your Canon R6, you're gonna have so much flexibility. But no, very similar. Colors are a little bit better on the Canon. This shot here, um, it didn't apply the bokeh, Like, there's no bokeh whatsoever on the, the pixel. So obviously, if you don't use the AI bokeh, which is falsely added, then you're not gonna get any depth whatsoever, unlike some of the smartphones with bigger sensors like the new iPhone or even the Pixel 6 Pro, you're naturally gonna get a little bit of depth, but you don't have that on the, the Pixel 6a. But no, uh, the, I would say the white balance is off, honestly, on the Pixel. It's just a little bit blue cast. In real life, it was very, very yellow, very warm. And then this one is like, I think this is the biggest difference that really shows you what you can do with a mirrorless camera compared to a smartphone. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The pixel, the pixel one is pretty garbage. So I would say the edge, the edge detection here is really bad in terms of actually blurring the background. I mean, it's blurring part of my friend's jacket here and also his hair is out of focus and it's just, uh, it's in and out. It's just not very good. Um, that's why I'm not really a big fan of just AI blur because a lot of the time it can kind of screw up and you're just better having the optics produce the blur. But obviously you have that flexibility. If I want to remove the blur, I can I can do it on the pixel, whereas it's in the image on the, the R6. But no, this image is just beautiful on the R6. The, the quality, if you zoom in, is unbelievable. This one right here, it's a lot darker on the R6. And also the fence kind of disappeared on the R6 as well. I think that was due to just the optics, the lens. I don't really know. It just, just disappeared. Um, but no, uh, I would say the colors are more accurate. The, the level of brightness is definitely more accurate on the Canon. 
It was obviously a shaded area. There wasn't much sunlight apart from coming in this little window up at the top here. And uh, yeah, uh, still pretty good on the pixel, but you know, Canon image is obviously gonna be better. And then this one right here, I would say, is pretty good on both. Honestly, the Pixel did a really good job. It's got amazing dynamic range, and that's because of the computational photography. So all your shadows are really brought up. All, all your highlights are just brought down to the correct exposure. Everything's so well exposed in this image. It's pretty unbelievable. I think I have one more in here. So yeah, this one, I was just taking on the way back when I was just, we actually walked across a bridge to the other side of the river to take these. So um, this is just by the river here, and really similar here. Honestly, I would say Pixel's kind of a little bit nicer to look at, but obviously there will be a little bit more detail and more control uh, over those, the brightness levels and everything and the exposure on the R6 photo. But honestly, yeah, Pixel's pretty good. Pixel next to this, I wouldn't really be able to tell. Can you guys tell which one is which? Let me know down below in the description, but very, very similar pictures, honestly. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. That's my little comparison between a mirrorless camera, which is really expensive, $5,000 or so with the lens, with the, the EF to RF adapter I've got on there, and just the body itself. Whereas this Pixel is like $350 or $400. I, the price keeps fluctuating, but pretty crazy. Pretty amazing what computational photography can really do inside smartphones nowadays. I mean, imagine Google's computational photography on something like an iPhone or, or some of the best mirrorless cameras. Can you imagine if we had this computational photography inside the Canon R6? You would be able to take unbelievable photos. So um, yeah, maybe that's what the future is all about. Maybe maybe more software optimization should come over to, to the mirrorless cameras so they can actually compete straight up without editing with smartphones because a lot of the time I kind of want to post quickly. I don't want to bring them into Lightroom and edit them and I don't really have a lot of time. Sometimes if I'm just snapping shots in the moment, I want a good quality shot with pretty decent colors and I'm not focused that much on uh, on editing it because I mean, most of the time I'm posting for social media anyway. But uh, yeah, if you wanna see more information on the Pixel or my review or my software or anything like that, I have a tech channel. You can check it out, I'll leave a card above. And that's where I pretty much talk about apps and all the stuff on my smartphone. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't want to blabber on anymore, but that's my little comparison. And I'm genuinely impressed by the Pixel. I'm super excited for my iPhone 14 coming, my 14 Pro Max, and I will definitely be comparing it to the Canon R6. So uh, yeah, let's see how it compares, but I'll see you guys later. Peace.